Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. Lillian Nadell, the Christian registrar, who was disciplined because of her stance against civil partnerships, has had her case heard in the European Court of Human Rights this week. Ms Nadell was one of four Christians who took their cases to the court in Strasbourg, claiming religious discrimination. Judges at the hearing will now consider whether the UK government has failed to protect the religious liberty of the four. Jessica Khan reports. Four Christians travelled to Europe this week to challenge rulings handed down by the UK courts. The cases are a watershed moment for religious liberty in the workplace, with nine judges sitting to hear the legal argument at the European Court of Human Rights. One of the cases was that of Lillian Liddell. She was forced out of her job by Islington Borough Council for refusing to conduct civil partnerships, despite the council initially accommodating her religious convictions. Dinah Rose QC, representing Miss Liddell, told the court that her client had been used as an instrument of social change by her former employer. The United Kingdom's position is that Islington was entitled to sacrifice Miss Liddell in order to send a message about its commitment to equal opportunities. It defeats a commitment to equal opportunities for the local authority to dismiss the employee who has a sincere uh, religious conviction when it was unnecessary to do so. What they have actually done is to show that they place no weight at all upon the right to equal treatment of Ms Liddell. The court also heard the cases of three other Christians. Nadia Awida wanted to wear a small cross on the outside of her uniform, but bosses at British Airways ordered her to hide it. Shirley Chaplin was told by the Royal Devon and Exeter NHS Trust that she could not wear a cross around her neck while she worked on hospital wards. And Gary McFarlane, a relationships counsellor, was sacked because he did not want to give sex advice to homosexual couples. But James EDQC, speaking for the government, told the court that Christians should leave their faith at home or accept that they might have to get another job. The court has consistently held that if an employer requires or prohibits conduct uh, while at work, uh, that Im individual employees consider inconsistent with their religious beliefs, there is no interference with Article 9 where they can obtain alternative employment in which they can practice their religion as they wish. The hearing in Strasbourg this week has provoked considerable debate, even though the judges are not expected to announce their ruling for several months. The National Secular Societies, Keith Porteous Wood and Simon Calvert from the Christian Institute, appeared on the BBC News Channel to discuss the cases. Mr Porteous Wood was asked whether he was trying to drive faith out of society. Uh, I think it's the opposite. I think that if these cases uh, are successful, that it will create a hierarchy of rights with religion at the top. And I think that's potentially quite disastrous, particularly as, uh, as far as uh, employers and gay people are concerned. Let's be honest, everybody has strong views, convictions about a range of things. They may be religious based, they might not. Um, but anybody who cares about freedom of conscience should want these people to win their cases. Um, it, it's because there is, um, I think, a hierarchy of rights at the moment, and religion's at the bottom, and, and freedom of conscience is at the bottom, and we don't want that. If, I mean, the Christian Institute is only involved in the case of Lillian Liddell, if she succeeds, it will have no impact whatsoever on the service provision received by gay people. All it will do is create a little bit of space for Lillian and people like her to be able to keep their jobs and keep their conscience too. Some other news now, and Right Reverend John Sentamu, Archbishop of York, has said that online pornography can lead boys to see girls simply as sex objects. He has called on internet service providers to do their utmost to tackle the problem. The comments come as a petition of over 100,000 signatures was handed into 10 Downing Street, calling on ministers to take steps to protect children from harmful online content. The petition was organised by Safety Net, with the support of Premier Christian Media and Safer Media, and the handover was timed to coincide with the closure of a government consultation on the issue. Dr Santamu said, We need to let children be children. Pornographic sites in particular are affecting young people's views on what is normal. He added that there was a need to compel the ISPs, who make more than £3 billion a year selling internet access services, to do what they can to protect our children. A humanist in Canada is seeking to stop the Gideons from distributing free copies of the Bible in schools. René Schwiner, 
has offered free atheist material to a school in Niagara, hoping that it would result in ending the Bible distribution. Mr. Schweiner said it was not his intention to hand out masses of literature, he just wanted to force the school board to show its hand. He says it is biased for the Bible to be handed out, but not free atheist literature, and is set to have his case heard at the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal. Mr. Schweiner said, we would like to see religion completely removed from the classroom. And finally, this week marked the 10th anniversary of the passing of Baroness Young, a formidable campaigner who worked tirelessly in the House of Lords to champion Christian values. She fought moves by her own Conservative Party to liberalise divorce laws and opposed attempts from Labour to remove a bar on the promotion of homosexuality in schools. The former peer was known for her tremendous Christian integrity and courage and was respected by political opponents and supporters alike. She won awards for her parliamentary work from The Spectator magazine and Channel 4. Speaking on the 10th anniversary of her death, the Christian Institute Simon Calvert said, Baroness Young was an inspirational woman who had a big impact on those of us who are privileged to work alongside her. She combined firm Christian principle with a gracious personal manner and thorough professionalism and hard work. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.